you know, have made this argument that we've, you know, we funded the police department too much. I just, I was, I just want to look at how Oakland compares. And it was one of those things where I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm not someone who's like, I love law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that we need to address police brutality in the police department. I mean, Oakland's. Yeah. I, Cause I thought, you know, you're right. Cause I thought I said to someone the other day that I thought that after George Floyd was killed, I thought the whole mantra was stop killing black guys mm -hmm. like right. me. Right, and all of a sudden we're from that to defund the police. Something. How do you go from there to there? You know. Yeah, yeah. Right. Where I think the goal should be like, you know, absolutely rooting out police brutality um, from the police department. But I think by not here in Oakland, right? There might be some cities because I saw the per capita numbers for some cities. Maybe some cities should honestly reallocate resources from their police department to other things. But in Oakland, I was struck by like. Wow, we are literally one of the few cities in the United States that has an extraordinarily high crime rate and yet is choosing to have a very low numbers of police. It was like Atlanta has a smaller population size and they have three times the size of the police force. It was things like that that, that just stuck out to me. Um, and so when I started paying attention to some of the dialogue and some decisions made uh, at our city leadership, I was just like, look, it's, I just this doesn't make sense to me, and I also started canvassing out in East Oakland because for me it's always important to center equity in any sort of policy decisions. And the thing that really blew me away was how many people in East Oakland, and maybe it was just by sample, literally everyone I approached on the street was willing to talk to me, said we feel actually unsafe. We would like to see more police officers. That was something that really stuck out to me. They were concerned about the response time with police officers not coming to their aid quick enough. Um, and so it started making me think around, yes, obviously over-policing is an is a issue, but under-policing is also an issue, you know. i, I got to ask you, uh, what do you think about having said that? Mm, yeah. The new budget will call for 100 less police officers. Yeah, I'm I'm deeply concerned around where this budget, where it's headed. And, you know, it's just one of those things where, as it relates to the budget, like, we have seen this coming. Like, it's not been a surprise, I think, in terms of that the city has been headed towards a budget deficit. It's been projected. Um, and it's one of those things is, don't get me wrong, I would love to, again, I've spent my whole life working on, like, funding social services, sat on boards of, you know, nonprofits and whatnot, but I think it's one of those things when we're in this period of, like, fiscal austerity, like, unless we want to head towards bankruptcy, like Detroit and Stockton and some of these other cities, and that's, you know, if we head towards bankruptcy, I think it'll challenge our access to capital markets to build affordable housing, for example. We need to make some tough decisions. And I think about... Although, in fairness to Detroit, they're back now. We have to have, like, a $2 billion surplus or something. Oh, okay. Oh, good for, good for Detroit. I'm glad yeah, I was just in, I was just in Detroit for the NFL draft. Hmm. Uh, a 20th year street of covering it. And I uh, had lunch with my friend, Kofi Bonner, who's CEO of Bedrock. Um, and Gilbert's real estate outfit, and uh, yeah, they really turned around the city. They really did a great job. Not to say that Detroit's in perfect shape, but compared to where it was when I went to the 2006 Super Bowl, yeah, it's it's light years better. Light years better. That's good. You know, because they have this uh, economic idea of really having everything go off at once. Having this this building, this building, this building, this event, this event, all everything going one year, boom, and it's as ridiculous as it might sound, actually is sound. It works. Mm -hmm. you know, it's investment. The end of right. the day. Anyway, go ahead. You were saying about... Um, yeah, I mean, I, and I will touch upon that, just basically these ideas around economic development that I think are really necessary here in Oakland, it, not only for the economy, but also to fund <laughs> our budget and all the social services that we need to fund here in Oakland. But Yeah. You know, I think we do have to... I have to, I have to say, emphasize, I am really sorry that happened to you because that was close yeah. to the end of your life. And I don't think that can be de-emphasized at all. 
Yeah. You know, that's, that's, I don't know what you've done to de- compress from that, maybe, or maybe just answer the question. Running for office is the decompression, right? I think so. I, yeah, I just started paying more attention and, you know, started noticing that a lot of Oaklanders, unfortunately, I feel very much not alone. It's like so many Oaklanders have some sort of story to tell themselves. So I, I guess I suppose why I don't feel like my story is sort of extraordinarily um, traumatic because unfortunately it's sort of this shared story across the city that right. people have had something happen to them and have found that maybe the policing response, you know, was less than adequate basically. So, yeah, it's unfortunate. So you uh, made this decision to run. Do you have a... Uh big entourage or you have to up endorsements where are you at right now in running oh sure so um yeah no i have a uh, campaign staff i got some uh folks uh mentoring me too um you know helping me run i don't know if they feel comfortable with me saying their name so i no i don't don't worry about it it's just you're yeah. the boss so whatever, whatever you want to do you so you talk you know so. yeah yeah. I have an endorsement. Um, name, name. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so one big thing in campaign fundraising or the campaign world is how much we fundraise through the end of quarter. This is through June thirtieth. Basically, everything that we fundraise goes public in these uh, campaign reports. And I'm happy to report that I've raised sixty one over sixty one thousand dollars. Actually, whoa. Yeah. So I think you know. Whoa. Yeah. So- one thousand dollars yeah so it's just a lot of folks that i've known over the years and it's not that i know a lot of rich people but i have known a lot of people over the years who have seen the sort of work i've done and how hard i work and i think they're just you know they really believe that i can make a difference like they believe in you that's a great statement yeah. right, right off the bat congratulations yeah thank you so um, if, go ahead. if you were to win what would be the first action you would take in office? Well, I will answer that. I realized I neglected to mention one thing in the prior question that I want to answer real quick. Oh, sure. We have an endorsement from uh, Pat Graham. Oh, yeah. Council president. So there's that and for run from something. Hopefully the goal is to get a lot more in the next couple of months. So cross my fingers. Um, sure. anyway, the backer, you've got a huge following. She comes with a following. Yes, right. Yeah, I'm excited about that. So yeah. I'm really honored to have her uh, to have her endorsement. Um, but when it comes to some of the the first thing I'd like to do here.